Today's video is going to cover a viewer request, or at least part of it, uh, that I received through an email. Had a couple different parts, and I'm just going to be breaking them up into various different videos. This first one's going to cover creating a uh, last message sent at little bubble for our chat rooms. So it's always going to show who sent the last message as well as when they sent it. Uh, this isn't currently being updated through any sort of sockets or anything. And you'll notice that if I send a message in here, like I say, hello, it says the last time that the message was sent, but it won't update as this ticks up. So this isn't a live update. And the other thing we're not doing yet is we're not sorting the chat rooms. Uh, that's just because sorting the chat rooms requires sort of a rewrite of what we have so far. So we'll worry about that in a future video. And I'll come up here and I'll just check what I have so far. It looks like I don't even have a profile picture on this one. So let me, okay, so I gave myself a profile picture, but I didn't give anyone else a profile picture. This is also the wrong database. So let me do a rails DB colon drop. Okay. And now let me do a rails DB. Actually, let me exit full screen because that's something we can cover. I want to go into the DB and the seeds and inside of here, I want to create a user, which I'm going to call Dean, which is just Dean at example.com. Then I'll create another user for the John account that we use a lot. And then I'll add two different chat rooms to Dean specifically so that I have these two added to my default account. We can also, I guess, come in here and create the Jane at doe.com account. And then we can run a rails db colon setup command, which should run our migrations and then run our seed. So now let me type a rails s command to start the server. Try to log in as dean at example.com with a password of password. Okay, so now I have a profile picture. Let's start adding some of this stuff. So the first thing we have to do is generate a migration. So I'll stop the server and I'll run a rails g migration. I'll call this add last message at two rooms. And then I'll say last underscore message underscore at colon date time. And that's just adding a little date time thing that we can use uh, to our rooms model. So that when a message gets created, it can update this column in our rooms to keep track of the time that the thing was created at. Uh, and that's not necessarily a part of this video because you could just do it off the message itself. But the reason why I'm doing that is so that when you refresh, it'll at least sort by the rooms correctly. I can show you what I mean. We can come into the rooms controller and in the index right here, we can change this from joined rooms to dot order last message at DESC. And if I refresh, oh, if I start the server, we shouldn't see any changes yet, but if I come in here and I'll leave a message in testing, so I'll say hey, hello. Okay, so now I've left a message in each of these and we'll refresh and you'll see it's not updating. The reason for that is we, although we're sorting by this, we're not actually setting this yet. So let's come into our message model. So we'll go into models, message model, and we'll full screen this and bump up the font size a bit. So in here, we have our after create commit. That's uh, fine, but we do kind of want to move this down here. We're going to change it from just this one block to be a do block, similar to our uh, turbo tutorial. And then uh, actually what we'll do is before we broadcast, we'll do an update underscore parent underscore room. And if you wanted to work just off of the last time a room was updated, you could actually go to the uh, room right here. And I think it's comma touch true will uh, when you save the message, it will then touch the touch the room. And by touching it, it'll just change its updated at to the current time. But because of how we're doing this, I don't really like doing that just in case like an admin updates the, the room's name or something, then this would get a little bit messed up. So instead, we'll leave it like this. And we'll come down here and we'll create a method called def update parent room. And for this, all we want to do is room dot update last underscore message underscore at and we'll say time dot now. Now we can exit this and uh, give this a shot. So I'll come into testing, which I'm already in. I'll say hi. I actually don't know what just happened, but it looks like my database got messed up. Hello. There we go. Uh, so now if I scroll through here, so you can see here, we insert into messages, this blah, 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 blah. Then we update the rooms and set the updated at and the last message at. 
So if you were to change the name, the updated at would get changed, but the last message at wouldn't, which is how we're sorting. So that's sort of why we separate those two. Now, if I come in here and I refresh, nothing will change. But if I come in here and I message general chat, that will also change this. And now you can see the testing is on top, which means our times here might be a little bit messed up. But because we're in the show action, actually, there's a good chance that this is also messing with it. So let's come in here and let's order the show action as well. We'll refresh. I'll come into testing and say, sent this last we'll refresh and now testing's on the top so that's probably what i missed okay so now what i'd like to do is i'll full screen this and we can come down to our views and our rooms so we'll start by going into our index.html and we'll change how we are rendering the rooms so instead of rendering just that at rooms we'll say render rooms slash rooms which is a partial we have to create We'll say rooms are the joined rooms and the user is the current underscore user. We can then come into uh, our rooms folder and right click underscore rooms.html.erb. Now in here we want to do, uh, what is it? Rooms dot each do room. And then in here we can do a render for room slash room. And then we'll have to pass in a couple things. So we'll pass in the room. We'll pass in the last message, which is going to be room dot last message and then we'll pass in a user which is the user now we can come into the room partial and in here we'll just do a turbo underscore frame underscore tag with a dom id of the room do end and then instead of having all of this in here create a new file call this underscore room underscore container dot html dot erb we'll paste in the room container we can come back into room and we can do, uh, actually we'll come back to rooms and we'll just copy this render for the room slash room. Instead, we'll render the room underscore container where we pass in the room, the user, and just the last message because that's passed in from higher up. And now our room container will have to change a little bit because right now this is just the actual link to the room. So that's just this right here. We need the text underneath. So what we'll do is we will take this section right here. We'll cut it that we just have those two classes. Then we'll do a dot row, move that down to here. We'll create a dot call dash 12, that down to here. And then our call dash 12 will have all of the stuff in it to position this room. The other thing is we wanna change this room link right here, because we had it somewhere else. I don't remember where. This should be a room path where we pass in the room. And then we want the name search to be the params name search, just so we're persisting the parameters if we want to. Uh, you can also clear it if you don't like it like that. So maybe you uh, you don't want the search bar to still have the old data in it whenever you search for something. So in that case, you could leave this blank. If you add in the name parameter, when you search for something and you click on a room, you'll still have your search history over here. So just something to think about. Uh, we can then come down here and we'll create another turbo frame tag, turbo underscore frame underscore tag, the DOM ID of room, and it takes in a last message. We can close that, do end, and then we can do a render of the room slash last underscore message, room, room, user, user, last message, last message. There we go. And then we can hit enter here a couple times to format things a little bit better. So now we have to create this last message partial. So right click, new file, underscore last, underscore message, dot html, dot erb. And now in here we wanna do unless last message dot nil question mark, which I doubt it would be nil at this point, but just in case you can do a row and then we can do a uh, similar thing to what we just had in the room I think or the room container uh, we'll backspace this and we'll just grab this stuff come in here and we can do a dot call dash 12 and then after the call dash 12 we can paste in oops this stuff right here so now our uh, room container has this stuff and then our last message has this stuff, so it's formatted similarly. Now in here, we can do an EM with a class equal to last dash message, and we can close the EM tag, and then we're gonna actually create two of these, so I'll just paste a second one down here. And then in this first one, we want to do a uh, double quotes, open up a template, and we'll say last underscore message dot user dot email, and we'll just say sent a message, and then we can do dot truncate, 
Uh, I think I did 40. And the reason we're doing this is just because you could include the body of the message here, but if there's an attachment, you would then want to make sure that you're not throwing the attachment into the, the preview window, unless that's what you wanted. Uh, you could of course just include like, what was it? Instead of saying sent a message, you could just say, uh, because you already know who the person is, if they're a user. So maybe for a chat room, you leave it like this, but if it's a direct message, you get rid of this uh, user's email. And instead you just say last message dot body dot body dot two underscore plane underscore text, I think. Something like that. I don't know if this will work. Probably gonna blow something up. Oh, we haven't actually defined the last message. <laughs> okay, so let's go do that real quick. We can come over to our room.rb. We can come down here and we just wanna create a method that I called latest underscore message. And, and this just returns messages.includes user.order I created underscore at desc dot first. So we're just including the user uh, just to save ourselves a couple of hits to the database. And then we're ordering it by created at descending so that we get the newest one first. And then we're just grabbing the first one of those. Probably more efficient ways to do this, but that's just sort of how I had it set up. So this is the latest message uh, method right here. We actually have to come in here to our rooms partial, change this to latest message. Oh, we gotta put an end at the bottom of our underscore last underscore message partial, which means this is broken. So now we can do last underscore message, bump this up, last message which has a body, Oh, which isn't rich text. I don't know why I thought it was rich text. So yeah, if it's not rich text, we can just do message.body, I guess. So you do message.body and then truncate it by 40. And I'll zoom out again. You can see sent this last general chat. Those are the messages. So if you had direct messages, it would make sense to do that. But we don't have direct messages here. We have uh, users in a chat room. So instead you would say user.email sent a message. You can then refresh. So Dean at example.com sent a message and then we'll include the time as well. And the reason why we're truncating this is just in case someone has a really long email or a really long username, then it doesn't overflow. But we can actually come over to here and we can say uh, instead of the last message, we can do a other template string with time ago in words where we do the last message created at space ago end quotes come over here and refresh. And now you see that we have this appearing here. And now we should probably style this so it doesn't look as bad, which means we'll have to come into our style sheets. I promise this won't be boring. This is just a really quick fix. Let me come in here. We're gonna control F for room list item and the user list item. And we'll just replace both of these with a height of auto. Put it there, save it there, exit, refresh. Now it looks a little bit bigger, but you can see right here, it's now giving itself the space it needs. The other thing we can do is we can come into the chat room.css, scroll down to the bottom, and then we'll just create a class called last dash message with a font size of 12, a color of hash AAA, and a margin top of five pixels. We can then refresh, and now you can see it's this nice small text that's a little bit grayed out that still tells you when the person sent the message. Now, it would be nice if we could have this update or something but right now it won't until I refresh the page. Uh, because we're updating the room whenever we send a message because it changes the room's last message at field, we can actually come into our room model and we had this after create commit up here. Let's uncomment this and instead of after create, we'll say after update commit, broadcast if public, and we'll just get rid of this and we'll instead we'll say if or return if is underscore private broadcast underscore latest underscore message so again we can update this later to work on the users but for now we'll just leave it like this actually let's try it without this is private instead we'll just broadcast the latest message so we'll grab this and below latest message, we'll create that method. We now need to do a last underscore message equals latest underscore message. And then we'll just return unless last underscore message. So if it's nil, then we don't do anything. We can then do a target equals room underscore ID base last underscore message. And we can do a broadcast replace two 
rooms, or we can do a partial of rooms slash last message. Uh, we also want a target now that I'm looking at this. So say target is gonna be target comma. So the rooms is the channel, the target is the div or the container that you're targeting. The partial of course is the partial and the locals are the local variables, which are gonna be room self. It's gonna be a user last message dot user. And it's gonna be a last underscore message of last underscore message, which we just created. I'll take all this, I'll tab it over so it looks a bit more normal. And then we'll bump this back to here and save this file. Then exit out of this, refresh the page and say, I don't know, test. And you can see it's already updated this to say less than a minute ago. I can come into the general and say, update this one too. And it'll update the general, it just doesn't sort them. Okay, I've logged into another account over here where I'll zoom in real quick. Oops, let me refresh, join the general chat room. And you can see here that Dean sent a message and I'll join testing as well. And I'll join the general and I'll say, hey everyone. And you can see here that it updates it to John at Doe sent a message less than a minute ago. So again, we'll cover sorting this and adding it to the users in future videos. I just thought this would be a good place to start. That said, if all of this turbo stuff was a little bit confusing for you, I did do a small turbo crash course the other day where I covered creating likes with turbo. And I'll have a link to that video on the screen right now.